a bit of an overall design video around the architecture of, of what I'm building here with this Tronxy VHO uh, 800 that I bought second hand. Um, and the sort of overall components I've chosen because I see a lot of people in forums stumbling around changing one thing or the other and um, I guess I want to just step back from a high level and say where am I actually going and is that of use to people. I also think that um, people should realise that the VZ bot, which also started with Tronxies, I've been building old smaller Tronxies for years, um, has sort of paved the way in a lot of this work for us and you'll see some of that with the choices I'll get into. So shout out and thanks to particularly Simon and Bez uh, for the, the work that that community's put together because a lot of it is able to be repurposed on this model of Tronxie. Um, just <laughs> pulling this thing to Chonksy because it's, uh, it's pretty tubby moving it into the studio. I run a full-time prototyping farm with uh, 24 bamboos and this is all about going bigger. Um, initial assessment, like many um, Chonksy parts, is you're really chasing for the most part the frame and a few components. Um, the history of the, the VZ bot very much about that as well, stripping down X5SA tronxies. Um, and my assessment is with the corner braces and things that given the speeds I'm doing, uh, large nozzle work and large part work, um, frame's pretty bloody adequate for me actually. And I'm even a little bit delighted with uh, things like the Z rods. So the only thing I would say is uh, one thing I'm thinking about changing is the way these bearings are loaded in an engineering world, that's a bit of a no-no sort of I don't know whether they're double race bearings in there or thrust bearings, but the whole thing really ought to be supported if this gantry is going to have a lot of weight on it. And the bed itself um, has these uh, thumb screw M4, uh, so four millimetre head bolts pushing up underneath on the hot bed, which creates sort of this, uh, you know, I'm exaggerating with my finger and I've marked these points in with red um, point loads um, with 240 volt beds under it. I'm in Australia, so we're 240 volt. Uh, I ended up marking these in and um, putting some Australian 20 cent coins, which I think are about the size of an American quarter, underneath them just to load and smooth that. And so far, I've dialed that in uh, literally with a pair of veneer calipers. Um, I have haven't sought to level this thing and I'm running with Marlin um, because I'm old school and uh, it's really working to the point where I'm running with a one millimeter nozzle 0.6 millimeter layer height and for that and I'm not trying to print too many things or flip it over anyway and get a perfect um, bottom layer to create a top visible surface um, that's working and it's working really well it's got me thinking a lot about uh, particularly, you know, Orange Storm Giga and stuff that comes out at the moment and the cycle time on levelling that bed software-wise takes ages. I come from a large CNC background where people tend to not have limit switches on big beds um, and they tend not to have bed levelling. We get it flat mechanically and then we leave it alone. And it's been my philosophy here, so you'll see no X gantry limit switch, although you can do that with senseless homing as well. And you'll see nothing on the Y. I literally drive this thing out in the middle, manually zero it now, and then hit print. Sounds like a lot of work, but when you compare that to the cycle time of the Orange Storm Giga, I think we've kind of lost our way starting with small printers and wanting to automate for the consumer the bed levelling process. And then when you double the length of that and double the width of that, um, you end up in multi-minute startup cycle times and that's just not where I'm going as a company. Anyway, enough of that rant. So the frame, once we get past that, my design approach is really, again, borrowed from the VZ bot world. Um, Vez has come up with this, and it's quite an interesting YouTube when you look back at it. Um, I think it might have even started its life as a water pipe with a 100 watt heater cartridge wrapped around the chamber um, got a little bit close to some of the work from uh, I think slice engineering so they, they went through a bit of a, a few legal discussions and things and it sounds like that parted reasonably well but the point is um, this 100 watt 
plastic cannon can do 100 millimetres cubed a second. Um, I'm currently running my limit in Orca Slicer, and if you're not using Orca, it's awesome for this kind of proofing out work and prototyping and calibration. Um, so it's limiting all the speeds to 40 cubic millimetres a second, and you'll find in my videos, I'm going to stop talking about millimetres per second linear speed because it's kind of pointless when you're getting into the big world of big printing. Um, it's all about how much plastic you can, you can send out. So to that point, um, I'm limiting it to 40 millimetres cubed, but I've got enough overhead in my design so that when I open up the kinematics, this thing doesn't dictate the bottleneck uh, of what the whole system delivers. And I'm targeting around three kilos a day. I had some quotes on some UV based um, printers that were multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars. They use a UV gel and they're around six to seven kilograms a day. And I just thought, well, if I can build one of these for around four to 5,000 Australian dollars, which I think is about 3,000 US dollars, then I'm doing all right. So that takes us back to the kinematics. The standard um, control board from Tronxy, much like their X5SAs that, that uh, became VZ bots, went in the bin. I bought it second hand. Now, this is a, an absolute rat's nest of wires because I'm still busy commissioning it. But what's extremely popular is um, the Octopus Pro in the VZ bot world. And it has two flavors of these large screens. I think they're actually stolen from car audio when you look at the knob. So this is a Marlin interface screen. There's also a clipper version. I'm an old school, I mean, I bought my first solid oodle back in 2011 and I've always worked with Marlin and I use uh, 24 off the shelf bamboos, which run a, a version of clipper, but learning curve wise, that just wasn't for me. So um, there are other people in our Facebook group called uh, VHO Upgraders, uh, who are running Marlin, uh, sorry, are running um, Clipper, but I just wanted to stick with this, but this gives me some opportunities to just tune things on a touch screen. Marlin 2.1 does linear advance, and you know, that's a reasonable approximation to Clipper anyway. And with a one millimeter wall, um, I'm not that interested in the harmonic benefits of clipper anyway so i've just gone with simple works i'm about to circle back print my enclosure and get rid of this horrible rat's nest of wires but it's one of those things where you're working at 2 a.m and then you're uh, looking back and thinking hmm better tidy that up there is also a 240 volt solid state relay down there locked away so that uh it can't go doing anything stupid from a voltage point of view through to the chassis um Tronxy in their wisdom of course are running two Y motors back into their original setup. So I'm going to redo that with shielded wires. There's no shielding on a lot of these wires, so they're about to get redone. Um, and I have to say, even though this is really dodgy from a design point of view, these little 2209 drivers, I've just hardwired a 50 millimeter 15 blower fan onto them for the X and the Y. And they're actually really cold, but I do want to split the wire across multiple ports and just run the wires back because it makes no sense at all to have the heaviest gantry piece running that kinematic weight back into two motors, only then to split it on one of these tiny two little toy 24 volt, two amp, uh, so what's that, you know, 50 watt drivers. Um, makes no sense at all. I've also bought some... 5160 uh, higher voltage steppers and I think I'll probably convert the kinematics to that um, just to keep things cool because at the moment that is really what's limiting the throughput of this system. The poor old orbiter um, is getting really hot but much like VZBot do, they run a CPAP fan and I'm planning to run the CPAP hose as well as um, material delivery line um, up over the top into this um, plate that I've created. I've just created really, it's almost a two dimensional plate with some features to use the standard screws that come with the device to hold the, the massive Goliath hot end and the, the little orbiter which runs on a sun and planet um, gearbox. So that'll cop a little bit of cooling air 
onto the back of that soon and then the rest will come down for part cooling i wouldn't normally bother with part cooling on such a large printer but um seems a shame to waste it when i am going to produce some parts that you know like an upside down cone or something once you get down to a fine point you do need that part cooling i'm getting with this one millimeter nozzle just feeling behind it roughly about 12 to 14 seconds behind it the material is still molten so by the time it comes back around that layer has uh, fused and cooled anyway the other thing um, I guess to, to shout out to the Goliath hot end is because it's going through a CHT nozzle uh, which is the nozzle which has sort of the three little internal features in it that mixing of the material the the Z layer uh, heat fusion in this setup is insane the the z layer bonding is really really good um so for these sorts of larger parts on producing things for theater productions and props and engineering parts and maybe car spoilers and, and automotive parts um that's an extremely handy feature i did do a little bit of lightning on this gantry but that was probably more for fun than anything i think the 5160 drivers if that becomes a problem um, can take care of that i noticed just in terms of power measurement that the bed itself pulling about 1.4 kilowatts in 240 volt terms um, and it's cycling one of the nice things about the octopus is you can see the the heat bed output port cycling with a little led here on and off and it's just pulsing so I get about an average across this thing of about 280 watts, keeping it at um, at 500. Uh, sorry, keeping it at 55 degrees centigrade to hold the plastic down seems to work nicely. However, the new polyurea-based beds that are gaining popularity on uh, bamboo printers, the blue, I think they're called a cryo grip plate. I'm looking at um, sort of redoing my farm. Uh, there's a bank of my farm printers at the moment with that. I suspect that would drop the um, power requirement of one of these machines. Probably not important to a lot of people, but ultimately I'd like to have four or five of these machines inside my studio on one circuit breaker. Um, so if I can really drop the, the amount of heat that this thing's consuming, I think that's a really important design feature uh, to think about because over a period of time this is like having a, a kettle boiling uh, or a microwave running you know constantly that's a lot of heat to produce and if i'm only using a small section of the bed this heat's just escaping so i think that the polyurea plate um well worth pursuing and much like the um, neptune orange storm giga rather than having an 800 mil plate i'll probably look at having four 400 millimeter plates um, I think I've covered off everything here, but on paper, when I take this particular model, producing it over two and a half hours, let's do a bit of a comparison with bamboo. So 385 gram model, two and a half hours, that's an equivalent of around 3.7 kilograms per 24 hour period. One millimetre nozzle, 40 millimetre cube. Now that's not necessarily a fair comparison in some ways with the bamboo. I've Put that from orca slicer in a bamboo slicer uh, same model to produce that grammage um, around 11.7 hours a day uh, sorry 11.7 let's call it 12 hours to produce that model on my one of my bamboos it just fits on the plate uh, on a 0.4 nozzle bamboos running their standard nozzle around 12 cubic millimeters a second I do retrofit my farm now with the E3D Obsidian nozzles and they almost double that. Um, so this starts to really change that equation as well. But I would say getting back to uh, the UV gel based printer where I'm trying to create some sort of economy of scale to that, you know, I'm really happy with that number. I think what I'll probably do is um, switch back to a 0.8 millimeter nozzle and the Arachne engine, which is the um, slicing engine that came out a few years ago, was built into Orca Slicer. That means that I can take a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, but I can taper it to a bead of around 0.6 for finer work. 
and I can push up to one or 1.2 millimeters with a width out of that as well. So it's kind of an each way bet. I'm going to have a bit of a play around with that. I think maybe 0.8 might actually be a bit of a sweet spot for some of these more detailed parts that I'm running. And I'm also going to have a play with a 1.2 and a 1.4 millimeter nozzle and just see if I can get um, a reasonable level of print quality for some of the large props and things I'm being asked to produce which do have some post-processing on them. See if we can get that singing up around sort of even five kilograms a day. But I'm more than happy to frankly run two of these machines for the money to get my seven kilograms a day versus um, what was looking like a significant six-figure investment. Um, also keen to probably compare that to what the Orange um, Storm Giga is getting in terms of kilograms per day. And I think pound for pound, once I tidy up this horrible wiring again, apologies, um, possibly update these drivers into uh, 48 volt for the kinematic drivers, cool the orbiter, and then I'm going to have um, a pretty sweet sort of equation on my hands, probably expand that out to the one metre bed if I can get the cryo grip uh, energy um, side of things down, and also the, you know, one of the machines maybe with the one point eight meter uh, z height on it hopefully that answers some questions i'm sorry for the long video but uh, i've seen a lot of people trying to change one component here one component there this is really a designed to be a bit of a step back video on what i think is a reasonable uh, package deal now for um, retrofitting a tronxy vho thanks cheers